until they can be compliant, they don't get the carrot. So just heed my warning, all of you, practitioners, health professionals, general public taking these peptides, if you're not prioritizing your muscle mass and getting adequate protein in on the regular, you are shooting yourself in the foot, quite literally, or looking at a hip fracture sped up because we're already looking at hip fractures because we're not taking good care of ourselves as a age cohort. Number six, assuming it's a monotherapy. This is not a monotherapy. This doesn't do great by itself, especially cranked up on high doses. We really want a full orchestra of benefits. And that means other peptides, bioidentical hormone replacement, making sure that we're optimizing certain organ systems of the body. We need the whole thing working together in order for these to have the most effect and to be able to keep them at the lowest doses and have them work. Remember, I've said this before, and if you haven't heard me say it before, hear me now. Microdosing and low doses do not work on those who are not metabolically optimized. So if you're not walking into this with muscle, having been strength training already, having been on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, doing all the things already, you're probably not a candidate for success with a microdose. That doesn't seem to be wanting to go through people's ears into their brains <laughs> because I'm getting messages from people saying, I have 60 to 80 pounds to lose and I want to try your microdosing strategy. And I'm like, no, that is not reserved for people who have 60 to 80 pounds to lose. People who have 60 to 80 pounds to lose are probably looking at more standardized dosing. That doesn't mean they have to crank it out into oblivion, but they're looking at definitely more standardized dosing. Keeping the doses very, very low and being able to cycle them and go on and off of them with flexibility is reserved for those who are metabolically sound. So if you're not metabolically sound, you need to get metabolically sound. The cool thing is, is GLP-1 agonists will help with that. They do actually help heal metabolism. So I'm not saying don't start it. I'm saying once you go on it, get your ass in gear and get your shit together and take this seriously because you have a window of opportunity here and you really don't want to have to crank these peptides up. Any peptide, any hormone will eventually have a receptor insensitivity if you are bombarding the system with it. So if you're flooding the cells with a peptide or hormone, they will it will cleave off its receptors and you'll have to take more and more and more. So we don't want that to happen and we wanna be able to keep these as low as humanly possible so we're not walking into nausea land. I'll give you a scenario. I've heard this multiple times. I actually heard it today. People are hitting plateaus on the low doses and I'm like, well, are they strength training? Are they prioritizing protein? Are they on bioidentical hormone replacement? No, no, no. Well, then why are you low dosing them? Of course, they're going to hit a plateau because there's other work to be done. And that other work is absolutely critical and non-negotiable if you want these to work, period. Even if you want them to work at high doses, you'll hit a wall if those things are not dialed in. So you have to do all the things in order for these to work optimally. And using them as a monotherapy, I think is a huge mistake. Taking a, a patient, especially a patient who's dealing with obesity and type two diabetes, and simply saying, here's your GLP-1, let's crank you up on the standard dosing, good luck. It's a real travesty. I think that's actually an ethical issue. Like that's a problem because that's not how this is gonna work. It may work in the short term, it's certainly not gonna work in the long term. And again, they may end up very well end up like scenario one that I shared with you when people are just frail, lost all their muscle and just totally metabolically devastated. So don't use it as a monotherapy guys. If you don't know how to do a comprehensive treatment protocol, you're going to want to grab my program because I go through it in there. The program is for healthcare professionals, doctors. I'm getting great feedback from the doctors in there saying, thank you so much. This is so informative. I'm learning how to treat my patients more holistically. I'm learning the language to use with them. It really is to make doctors better doctors, but it's also open to the general public because I want you guys to be fully educated around what it is that you're taking and this journey you're going on. You need to know what all the moving parts are and you need to know how to find a doctor to prescribe this way. So I, there's a whole module dedicated in there to how to t find a doctor, talk to your doctor. Um, if your doctor's not going to cooperate, what to do next. There's five different steps in there on how to find someone to work with and people are having good luck if they're proactive. You have to be the most potent advocate for your own health. And it's going to take some groundwork and it's going to take some research. It's not as simple as calling your doctor or calling your pharmacy and saying, do you offer microdosing? They're not going to have a clue what you're talking about. I literally came up with this concept and I'm not saying I'm the only one doing it because there are more people doing it now, especially those taking my course hopefully are doing it. But 
I still am hearing from those same doctors that are supposedly doing microdosing and it's still in their head to use it for weight loss. And they're still missing some important pieces along the way.